Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're painting Jolly Roger Bay from Super Mario 64. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. The ship will be there, the eel will be there, I'm going to bring in um, the shell at the bottom, but other than that, I'm kind of pushing it a little bit different. So like the original ship sits at the bottom of like this well, so I'm going to bring that effect in by kind of bringing a little bit more of a brighter light here, and it's going to cast light down in a spotlight effect on top of part of it. Um, and the LG or kelp or whatever it is in the game, I'm going to make it a lot taller, um, a lot more layers of it, so it's kind of hiding parts of the eel and it's kind of giving this nice depth to the entire piece. And in order to start all of this, what I want to do is I'm going to kind of block in where this is, maybe where the bottom is, and kind of roughly where the boat is. And then I'm going to do my very, very background colors behind all of this kelp fields, just to kind of give myself like a background where I can start to build all of this on top of. Now I want all of this to kind of have a green cast. Um, just because it feels kind of green in the game. So I'm starting with more of a um, greenish blue color for the bottom of the water background here. And I've toned it down just a little bit so it's not so saturated, and I did that with more of a red-orange color because they're complements for blue-green. And as I get closer to this light source, I'm going to just lighten up with some light gray and then more white the closer I get to it. For the sand for the ground down here, I'm using more of a greenish blue, um, greener than the watercolor, and I'm going to fade that more towards a light version of it with more of a light gray towards here. Using a chalk pastel pencil, I drew in the eel and the ship. Now I'm using a dark blue to block this in because I want it to blend in with the background and be kind of a little bit hard to see um, because of the foggy murkiness of the water. I took this color and added a little bit of Mars black to it so you can see right here on the ship just how dark that is compared to the background. Now I will be using a little bit of Mars black to do the details um, so you can see like where the plane changes are on the ship and like what parts are darker and lighter so I don't lose some of my chalk drawing. Um, but that's it. As I start to do my layers coming forward, I will be bringing in more detail and color as it kind of gets into this light well section so you can start to see some of that detail. But far away I want to have it blend into the background, which is why I'm doing everything with this dark color first. Using the chalk pastel and some of these same dark blues, I filled in one row of the seaweed. Now I could have done this in a couple different ways, and I did some research and tried out some different ways, and this is the one I ended up going with. Now one of the things I could have done is I could have stuck straight with Jolly Roger Bay and Super Mario 64, and done the short little tiny seaweeds on the sea floor. But I really wanted to make it a bit more menacing and have the eel kind of coming through it and getting closer and showing the depth. So I thought that more um, like a kelp forest would make it seem more menacing. So I did some research on vegetation that's in the ocean, and I thought that kind of keeping the same type of seaweed that's in the game, but making it more like a forest here underwater, would make it kind of that happy medium that I'm looking for. Um, so after I filled all of that in, I decided that it's too dark. Like, I like the colors I have for the background, and I like the value I'm getting on some of these things, 
It's just they're standing out too much from the background. You can see them too well. So there's a couple ways I can address that. I can repaint everything with like a slightly bluer color that's closer to this and like the sand down here. Um, or I can kind of do a wash across the entire thing that's like transparent, mostly see-through to kind of push everything back and hide it a bit better. Um, and I decided to go that route. So in my sketchbook, um, I always keep a swatch page where I put down swatches of the colors I'm using and what I put in them. For example, this right here and this right here um, were kind of this dark blue layer that I have in the water. And I listed the paint colors that went into it, and um, then I also put different swatches of like this lighter blue and then the super light blue up here, just to show myself what they look like. So later, if I need to make those colors, I can mix them up according to what it says, and then test it right here on the paper, and you can see a couple of those little tests right here, just to make sure it's exactly like it is on the canvas. So over here, I did a big swatch of all of these watercolors, and I did a little bit of the seaweed on top and then just used some of the darker colors like I did for the eel and the boat, just to kind of see how it would work underneath a glaze. On top of that, I did a glaze, and you can definitely see it right here. It's very transparent against the paper versus on top of the original paint swatch I had. And I think it pushes it back pretty good and it also darkens everything up really well. So that's how I'm going to address this. I'm going to mix up this dark glaze over here and then just cover the entire canvas in it just to push everything back a little bit and make it a little less obvious. In order to make this glaze, I used GAP 100, which is a transparent media, and then I used acrylic glazing liquid. And I mixed both of those together until I was happy with the consistency, um, a little bit more on the runny side than the thick side. And then I added some of this blue and some of this blue to it until I was happy with the color. Um, so what I'm going to do is use a really big brush, and it helps if you have a softer brush. The stiffer your bristles are on your brush, you'll get lines, and I don't really have a really big soft brush. Um, I have a couple foam brushes, so that's going to be my backup if this one doesn't work. But I'm going to load up my brush with quite a bit of paint, and then I'm just going to start across the entire thing, um, right here in the middle. Because I want it to be hidden most right here, that makes the most sense for where I should start. And you can already see that it's kind of masking the ship and kind of pushing it back and making it look further away. Now I don't want to darken this too much and this too much, so I only did this middle part. And I know the eel looks a little bit weird with some of it being masked and some of it being that solid black. But as I do my layers, I'm going to be bringing more and more of like the red and the true colors as it gets closer to this front part. So it won't even matter because this will be filled in solid bright colors anyway. Two things when you're doing these transparent glazes. Um, number one, put a layer down, let it dry, walk away for a few hours. You want it to be completely dry before you do anything else. And that includes deciding if you like it or not. Because when you put it down, it's kind of milky plus whatever color you add, it's going to dry differently. And I put this down like a few minutes ago already and it's already starting to dry and I'm thinking I didn't put enough down. But I need to let it dry completely before I even do a second layer because it can mess up what I've done. So I'm going to let it dry, then decide if I need a second layer or even a third layer. But it needs to dry in between each of those or you can pick up the paint and it won't be like an even layer where like you first put it down. So definitely let it dry between layers and let it dry before you completely judge if you like it or not. Um, the second thing is do not use water to do this. I know your paints are very thick and they can be very opaque, but you cannot use water. What happens is you're taking the paint and there's a binder in it that makes it adhere to things when it dries. Um, like watercolor soaks into the paper and it's in the paper, it's part of the piece. With a painting on a canvas, it's sitting on the surface of the canvas, so it needs to be able to stick to something. So when you add water, it loses that sticky quality when it dries because it doesn't have the same properties to bond to it. The water evaporates and is gone, whereas with regular paint, when it dries, the evaporation like is already part of it and it's sealed it to the canvas. So definitely use some sort of media. I really like GAC 100, it's clear and transparent. It's a bit more fluid than some of the other ones that Golden makes, so I like using this. Um, I like using the acrylic glazing liquid. In fact, for this one I, I used both because I wanted this, but I wanted it to be a little bit more liquid. Um, there's also this airbrush transparent extender. Um, this works too, but I don't like it as much, so I kind of don't use it as much as the other two. Thank you. 
as these layers come forward, they're going to get lighter and closer to their true color. So I've mixed up a green glaze to put on the second row I did, um, the ones that have the little bit of chalk mark on it. So I'm just going to take this green glaze and go over the top of those just to give them a little hint of green. I've been using my shades of blue to fill in the ship. I've been adding some value, I've been adding some detail with it, but now I want to start to add some color. Like I said, the things that come forward, they're going to get closer to their true color, and it's kind of hard to tell with the boat just because it is blue, um, but the deck has some tans and some greens in it, so I'm just going to add that towards the front and kind of fade it towards the back. And the hull of the boat has just some lighter blues, and I'm going to add those in too, um, in addition to where I'm putting in the different planks. in the eel and everything kind of up here is solid paint and as it moves further down the body I added more and more glazing liquid to make it transparent. That way it naturally fades into this navy blue color I have back here and it looks like it's going further back in space where you can't see those details. Um, now when I did everything um, I used that glazing liquid like with the fin. I started with this light gray and black and I just added more glazing liquid the further back down the fin it went. Um, just to kind of give it that idea. Now that that's all done, I need to start adding more and more kelp. So I'm going to start thinking about kind of where it is here on the ground and bring it up and make it bigger and more green. As I'm drawing these, I'm thinking about where their base is in relation to the shadow of the eel and the boat. So if I want to put one like right here, it sits in front of this shadow. The shadow is further back on the ground than this piece of uh, seaweed is. So if I bring it up, it should sit in front of the eel. So that's how I'm kind of judging what's in front or behind this eel. blocked in all of the seaweed and it's very flat right now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding detail. Um, it normally kind of has this center stem and on the close-up ones I'm going to add it and I'll just add more glazing liquid the further back I go until you can't see it at all. 
Um, and the other thing I want to do is I'm going to use glazing liquid with some blue to do shadows. So like down in here or um, like when it flips in the water between like the front and the back, I'm going to add some shadows with like a transparent blue and I'm going to add some highlights with a transparent yellow. These are still looking pretty flat, so I still need to add the value. Um, so in my sketchbook, I did a swatch, um, three stripes of each one of these last few colors of seaweed, just to see how the highlights would work on it, um, if I liked a color better over a different color. Um, and I found that mixing chromium oxide green and Hansa yellow with a glazing liquid worked really well for a highlight, and for the shade using a transparent phthalo. this far and it feels like there's something missing. Um, I had planned to put some things down in the sand but I felt like it would get really cluttered and I like the simplicity of it with only the few objects but there is something missing. Um, so what I think it is is I think I need to kind of make this more of an arch. Just this space here because right now it kind of just arches to here and then kind of continues off the canvas that way so I need to round this out and I'm going to do that by adding one more piece of seaweed right here and just bringing it up. we have Jolly Roger Bay from Super Mario 64. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.